since you do know it now, how many know you ain't going back to bed because of what I know? Ooh, y'all, y'all gonna make me preach hard today. I'm so glad I know what I know. What did the devil advance who said, all I know is what I know. And I know that Jesus is real. I know that Jesus supplies all your needs. But it's one thing to know it, and it's another thing to act on. And let me say this because it's critical for you to understand this. The will of God is not automatic in your life. Just because you will something to happen that God said, it's not automatic. You have to cooperate with God in order to make the will of God come to pass. How many know that prayer is the medium that God uses to get involved in your situation? So if you're not praying, how many know you can't get God's intervention in your situation? He wants to do it, but you got to follow his instruction. And here's what I'm finding out in the body of Christ. We're hearing a lot, but we're not doing a lot. We're becoming spiritual fat cats with all the knowledge of how to live right. We know Greek, we know Hebrew, we know all this stuff, and we still don't know how to quit lying. We know Greek terms, we know Deuteronomy means the ability to, we know Kratos means the, the strong power of God, we know all these terms, and yet we're still struggling not to sleep around. Oh, I'm going to preach like a pastor this morning. We, we want to get so deep in the word, we want to get so deep that we don't e even understand Romans 12 and 1. I beseech your brother by the mercies of God that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. Why? 2 Corinthians 6. And 20, you've been bought with the price, therefore glorify God in your body. We, we, we quote it, but we don't know it. We don't live what we know we ought to live. Ooh, I'm preaching in here this morning. Hallelujah. James 1 and 25. 22 says, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourself. The worst kind of deception is self-deception. When you think you're something that you're not. When you think you're greater than what you really are. Ooh, I'm preaching up in here today. Let me tell you something. If you think you're there already, you got pride. And pride going to grow distrust. And a haughty spirit before a fall. Y'all remember my message, help Lord, don't y'all? So every once in a while, I don't care how saved you are, how much Holy Ghost you got, how much you speak in tongues, every once in a while you need to raise your hand and say, help Lord. Because we are people who need help. Somebody said, preach fast. Come on here. If the will of God is not automatic. We got to work to bring the will of God to pass in our life. Second Chronicles seven fourteen says, if my people, if, if, if. If is a, on condition. If my people which are called by my name would humble themselves. If. See, you'll be strong if. You do what God say. I'm here to tell you, shouting ain't going to make you strong. You can't shout away the flesh. Ooh, y'all. If we can shout away the flesh, I'll be shouting every day. <laughs> I promise y'all. I'll be making these old balls go up and down. <laughs> if I can sing away the flesh, I'll be singing like an angel. By the mind, you can't shout away the flesh. You can't sing away the flesh. And let me tell you something. Flesh is an everyday path. You got to deal with it on an everyday basis. 
says, if you don't, the day you don't deal with it, the day it's going to pop up. And some of y'all don't deal with it on Sunday. Forget about Monday through Saturday. Some of y'all come in here with an attitude. Because flesh ain't been dealt with. Let me tell you something. Flesh, it'll, it'll act up in church too. I seen flesh act up in church. My God, flesh don't have no, no place where it won't act up. It'll act up on the altar. Come on, I seen people speak in tongues be mad for the service over. Flesh is a mess. Somebody say flesh is a mess. Can I tell y'all what the Bible says about the flesh? What the Bible says about the flesh? Romans 7, 18, Paul says that in me, that is in my flesh, Oh, y'all already know it. See, I know y'all know scripture. We know it. In me that is in my flesh dwells no good thing. Ain't, ain't nothing good in my flesh. Nothing that's going to direct me toward God in my flesh. And can I say this? Everything in the world is geared to get your flesh. Commercials are geared to activate your flesh. You turn on TV, boy, there's a big whopper on there. With tomatoes just dripping, come on, Jack, you know, tomatoes dripping down the side and lettuce, and, and you know they don't look that good for real. <laughs> but, they, but they spice it up, right? They make it look real good. And, and, and you don't even want no hamburger until you see that commercial. You're like, I think I'm doing my Burger King. Because <laughs> that, 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 that thing is designed to, to get to your flesh. They had a commercial here not too long ago. Uh, I think it was Paris Hilton that was doing a commercial on hamburgers in a bikini. Washing a car in a bikini doing a hamburger commercial. How many know that wasn't about no hamburger? The, com the commercial was not about what water got to do with a hamburger. What washing the car got to do with a hamburger? It is designed to get men to start lusting because the enemy wants to control the airway. He is the prince of the power of the air. So everything he's putting over the air is designed to get to your flesh. Not only on the air, but on the internet. Not, see, now the devil got smart. You ain't got to go out to x-ray the place because you might get caught. So you don't want to get caught, so now the enemy has brought it into the home. Well, don't nobody know what you're surfing. I told y'all I'm going to deal in here today. Don't nobody know what you're looking at on, the, on that at night when you're on that computer. But God knows. Somebody say, God knows. Proverbs 15 and 3 says, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. He knows. And flesh loves to be patted. Flesh loves to be catered to. Why? Because in you is no good thing. That's what the Bible says. Am I right? The Bible says in 1 John 2 and 15, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, they are not from the Father, but they are from the earth. Isn't that what the words say? What else the word say about the flesh? Uh, Matthew uh, 26, uh, 41, it said, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. Why? Because the spirit is willing. Here's a good one. But the flesh is weak. Flesh is weak. Y'all make plans, but flesh is weak. All flesh need when you're on a diet is to see a chocolate cake. <laughs> All you have to do is see it. That's why it's called the lust of the eyes. The eyes are the only part of your body that has a lust. Y'all didn't know that? The eyes, I mean, because when I see it, I want it. So I be mean, I done made a prayer not to eat, not to eat sweet. I'm going to just fast from sweet. Then you start quoting scripture, but my God shall supply all my needs. And I can do all things through Christ until you see that came with the chocolate icing coming down.